Hello, gorgeous people of the internet. Welcome to Royal Clarence. It's a bit noisy because a whole crowd of children have appeared in the communal gardens. And I'm just trying to... I think they've gone. I think they've gone. That's good. Um, at least you know it's live, don't you? Now then, what have I got to tell you today? Well, I've managed to get to 10.35 today without being rude to anyone. And I'm feeling quite smug about that. Also feeling smug because yesterday... Despite torrential weather in the UK, I managed to avoid getting wet. It was amazing. It was so bizarre that, um, you know, we have this bright sunshine, which is happening now, and it's teeming down. It's through the... There's a little bit of cloud cover, and it's teeming down, and it it almost looks like spring. It almost feels like spring. Um, Anyway, so I haven't got wet, and I haven't been rude to anyone, and I just thought, goodness me, I deserve a medal for that, I think, or the children are back. Um, anyway, uh, I was also, I was washing up because it's butler's day off and I was thinking about how when I die, because I think about that a lot, I don't know if you do, but I think you get to an age where it sort of preys on your mind a bit because you realise it's downward rather than upward. <laughs> Not just physically, but also in in perspective, in time, you're you're not going to live as long as you've already lived. And then you look back and you think, well, that went in a bloody flash, didn't it? And what, you know, the the next bit's obviously going to be even quicker. Um, my mum gets terribly upset, actually, because her life seems to be just falling through her fingers. She's coming up for 80 shortly. And I, th- I was thinking how interesting that is about concepts of time. When you're young, you just think, oh, it's such a drag, isn't it? So I'm wondering about how I can find that state of perception again. You know, to to make it seem like it's dragging a bit. Because when things are dragging a bit, you sort of come up with ideas about pleasuring... Not, I nearly said pleasuring yourself. You know what I mean. Making, making yourself enjoy what you have in the now and not in the past or the future. And I, I think this is what happens when you get a bit older... Uh, And particularly, I mean, I can't speak for all elderly people, but particularly in my opinion, you start living for the future because you know you're going to die and remembering the past and completely forgetting the now. And this is something actually that people who suffer from depression do. So it could just be me. (laughs) Who knows? But um, yeah, I'm going to have a day today where I just live in the now and I thought I need to step back a bit from arguing with horrible people who's, who've paid 99p for a piece of artwork and, um, you know, just trying to really enjoy the, the sun as it comes down and my new cello and a bit of tinkering on the piano and maybe not doing quite so much work. Actually, I'm going to do some colouring in today. Um, I'm going to relax a bit. I'll do a bit of yoga and a little bit of ballet Um, which you can do online. I have to be very careful because I'm breaking myself in very gently, actually, with the ballet. If you are an older person, lady or gentleman, you can do something called Ballet Tech, which is... She's a Canadian lady, Sarah. She's a lovely teacher. I've put her... One of her videos on my website, actually. So you can pop along there and have a look. And she does something called Swan Classes. And they're for older, I mean ladies primarily because older gentlemen seem not to be keen on ballet. I don't know why because I think it'd be quite helpful. Anyway the swan classes are specifically for older people so I might put some more of her videos up actually today because it's she's such a lovely lady and you can um, see quite a lot of her free stuff on YouTube but you can also sign up with her um, and you know, have sort of one, not one-to-ones, she has a group class for the swans. And it's just fantastic. She's so very gentle and so lovely. And, you know, my mother, when I was about five or six, I think, I begged her, begged her to allow me to do ballet. But she told me I didn't have the body for it. And it's affected me terribly ever since. Well, now that I'm in my, well, now that I'm in my final quarter... (laughs) We should, we'll refer to it as that. Um, I do have the body for it. Uh, I'm, I was, I suppose I was quite a plump child, but I don't think I was that plump. But the truth of the matter is, 
as mothers confessed lately, it was a financial burden um, paying for classes, uh, uh, you know, extracurricular classes. Um, but it would have been much kinder, I think, if she'd said that. Although I would have just grown up thinking, oh, God, my parents were so poor. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's funny, isn't it? We get so affected by um, offend, offensive comments, remarks. We take them completely out of out of the context of the sort of society and the experience and the pressures you know I would I wouldn't have been thinking my poor parents having to pay because I was also also asking for a pony <laughs> but I didn't care that they they told me I couldn't have a pony nearly as much as they told me that I couldn't do ballet um anyway back to the kitchen sink and butler's day off I was washing up and it occurred to me that when I die the, the my people won't stand up and say oh she was such a kind person uh, I'm sure they won't, although I I feel that I am quite kind. But then I was thinking about eBay man and I thought, oh, perhaps I'm not as kind as I think I am. Or perhaps I don't come over as kind. I think that's that's the issue, isn't it? It's, it's how you're perceived. Because actually I, I consider myself, um, you know, a very... I wouldn't say financially generous I'm, because, I, you know, I, I'm not... I'm not that generous. Although, of course, with my kids, I give them everything, you know. And I always did. I've completely sacrificed everything, as that's what parents do, isn't it? Um, but, you know, I'm not kind in, in the sense that I walk around giving people £50 notes. Or what, what do you say in a marriage? Do you have ten, $50 bills? Do you have those? Um, but I, I don't have nasty thoughts, apart from eBay, man. Um, so, anyway, I was washing up and thinking, ah, oh, that's that's weird isn't it this perception that other people have which directly contradicts my own perception and then I was thinking well do I care <laughs> perhaps this is where I come across as a bit unkind do we really care about anything once we're dead you know who cares who's saying what about you in the great scheme of the cosmos I mean all that matters to me it, when I'm dead I think is that there is some legacy of creativity remaining and I've sold a reasonable amount of artwork. So, you know, somebody might hold on to something long enough. And now, of course, with Serverland, I produce, I've got, you know, the shop and everything, so I'm producing a lot. Um, but mostly, I, I suppose, music. I, it's the music that I really want to pass on. And this is why I'm doing, I mean, I've taught a lot of people, and that's a sort of passing on, isn't it? But the idea of composing some uh, something much bigger I think is really drawing me uh, uh, in the in the last quarter because you can compose right up to your death. Of course you can, and I've been composing little songs uh, for the immersion book. So I've been composing, um, you know, three minute, quite. Uh, the, I mean, they're layered. Pop songs are sort of layered. You have, I don't know, in between eight and ten sort of layers but when you're working with a full orchestra of course you, you can have more I mean you can have, have more instruments and even you know the the violins can be doing different things so you can have sectionals and you can have three layers of violins and three layers of cellos if you wanted um, generally there's two but do you see what I mean and then all these things on top of each other create this rather mammoth exciting glorious sensual experience so that's where I'm going at the moment I'm thinking no I need to pass something on because they're not going to call me kind so so they might as well call me clever or inspirational or um talented I'd quite like to be called talented I I think we all would wouldn't we um so I'm I'm okay about that I'm okay that uh, people may not perceive me in in terms of my personality um in, in the way that I'd perhaps like. We'd all like somebody to stand up and say, she, you know, she was a wonderful human being, totally generous of spirit and a pleasure to be around. But, you know, I'm, I'm probably none of those things. So, um, anyway, what have I got for you today? I have got a little free loop um, ringtone. And the thing with the ringtone is I, I put those up as um, as files so you don't you won't hear kids in the background or anything like that so and you can just cut me off and then you can download your loop 
for or your ringtone or your jingle, whatever you'd like to call it, and you can do as you will with it. So uh, just a little word on what I use today. Um, I've called it electric shock bass. And it, it gives me... I used a, an acoustic drum on it, actually, which uh, gave me the sense of a sort of garage band having a practice. And then I sort of fused it with a, with a couple of um, almost futuristic things. I quite like that, you know, mixing these time... Uh, senses the, the you know things different instruments give you a different sense of time we we all know that because we've we've all loved popular music at the time when we grew up so you can sort of tell a 1960s drum feeling and but you don't know why it sounds particularly of your generation but you know you like it do you see what i mean you don't you don't need to be a, you don't need to study music to know these things these are sensory things they're, they're deeply um meaningful for us so uh, they've done some surveys actually some um, well studies I should say you know uni studies and people are very connected to the music that they listen to in their teenage years up and up to about 35 they don't listen to anything more current um, or after 30 after their 30s or 35 you know, if that makes sense, they, you know, they're not interested anymore. All they're interested in is looking back, um, which is a challenge for me because I'm making forward-thinking music and I'm making music for videos and music for film. Um, I think that's a bit different. I think the narrative is is quite different there. So this is electric shock bass, um, and it's only eleven seconds. So if you're not into any sort of jingles, you can turn the tape off now. Um, and I'll be back tomorrow with more and I'm going to be chilling today, as I said, and doing a bit of colouring in for my eBay shop. I'm going to shift things around a bit so that I don't have to argue with people about postage. I'm just going to do free post, but pop the prices up a bit. So only, only to five or ten pounds, nothing uh, outlandish. Um, but I, unfortunately, if you're in America, I can't offer you free post, I don't think, unless they're very small. Perhaps I will. I'll inquire about that because free post is, is quite tempting, isn't it? You sort of think, oh, that's, are you, you, what you see is what you get. Um, so have a look at Serverlan and my shop on eBay and see if you like those, if you're interested. Um, not now. Wait till tonight because at the moment I'm, I've just, I'm here with my, all my colouring out, all my pens and paper and ready to um, ready to go on on a rather lovely day ahead so electric shop base um, loop and sign up if you want but guys you don't have to you really don't have to you know signing up is not imperative and I hate it don't you when all you get is is somebody waffling on about please subscribe please sign up however you can if you want to <laughs> all right my darlings I enjoyed this chat and um, speak later